Something exciting has arrived in Dublin, combining 80 years of service excellence with 120 years of German engineering. Linder's Opel, the new name for Opel in Finglas and Turvey. Call in and meet our expert sales and service teams. Find your perfect 191 Opel and choose your perfect offer. With 0% PCP and HP Finance, a guaranteed minimum of €3,000 scrappage or three years free servicing. Visit lindersopel.ie for details or drop in to us at Finglas and Turvey. Linder's Opel, now open. Terms and conditions apply. Blog Talk Radio. You are my protector and you are my provider and my deliverer. There's no other. Stevie B's Media Production presents What a Word from the Lord with your host Stevie R. Butler. This radio show is dedicated to spreading the truth of God's word. Rightly dividing the word of truth. We're grateful that you are tuning into our radio broadcast this evening. This radio show is brought to you by loving and faithful members of the churches of Christ around the world. We would ask that you would take out your Bibles and study along with us. We have a very exciting show planned for your spiritual enlightenment and your edification. If you would like to be like us to contact, if you would like to contact us while we're on the air this evening, give us a call to the live show at seven one three. Nine five five zero five zero eight. If you have any questions, uh, comments, or concerns for any of my special guests on this broadcast, you can send me an email to srbutler one zero zero nine at yahoo dot com, or you can call the show or call the Carolina studio at nine one zero four nine one six four zero five. Now again, this program is brought to you by members of the Churches of Christ, and if you need any assistance in locating a congregation in your area. Please contact us. Now, folks, get out your Bibles and study along with us here on What a Word from the Lord with your host, Stevie R. Butler. Good evening, wherever you are in the world listening to this radio broadcast. Stevie B's Media Production presents What a Word from the Lord. I'm your host, Stevie R. Butler. And this radio show is being broadcast from the Carolina studio 
in the great state of North Carolina. Ladies and gentlemen, we are just grateful for the privilege to be able to bring you a program where we as Christians and members of the Churches of Christ can share our faith and preach and teach the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ on a weekly basis. So before we go into our program for this evening, I would ask that you would bow with me in a word of prayer that we may thank God for this opportunity. Our most kind, gracious, loving, heavenly Father, the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for allowing us to go through the various activities of the day and placing it on our hearts that we are on this broadcast and we are prepared now to present a portion of your holy and divine word. Father, praise you will be with my special guest speakers on the broadcast, Melvin Jackson and Carlos D. Page, as they present unto us the bread of life. Praise you will continue to bless their efforts as they sow the seed of the kingdom and bless their families as they support their efforts as well. Father, we praise you will be with our listeners who are tuning into this broadcast. Pray that they may hear something that will cause them to consider their eternal stance before you and their soul salvation. Father, we thank you so much for Jesus and all that he means to us in this life and in the life to come. Father, we are so grateful for all that you do for us in this life. Father, we pray that you will continue to bless us and keep us and love us all the days of our lives. And if we have been faithful unto death, Father, we pray that you will save us. For it's in Christ's name we do ask it all. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in to What a Word from the Lord. I'm your host, Stevie R. Butler. We got a special show lined up for you on the broadcast this evening. I have now I have two guest speakers on the show tonight. Uh, my first speaker in the first segment will be Melvin Jackson out of High Point, North Carolina. Looking forward to hearing a word from Melvin. He's been on the broadcast before. He's my dear friend and brother. So always look forward to hearing a word. Uh, from Melvin on this broadcast. And then in the community corner, my special guest will be Carlos D. Page. He's out of Biloxi, Mississippi. And he'll be talking about the Millennial Conference that he's sponsoring down there. He's going to be giving us some information about that conference. And then uh, Carlos has agreed to bring us a lesson in the third segment on the broadcast as well. So looking forward to hearing a word from Carlos on the broadcast. So I will not be bringing a lesson. Amen. So sometime I just need to sit back and Listen, I don't mind I don't mind listening to the word of God being preached. And I just thank God for this opportunity to bring this program to you, ladies and gentlemen, because we have been having a great time uh sharing the word of God on this broadcast. So the next show you uh the next voice you hear after this song will be that of my special guest speaker, Melvin Jackson. Enjoy the show. Open your Bibles now and open your minds and let's have a great show. When God says no, and we want his answer to be yes, just remember, don't forget, Father knows what's best. best. When I lay awake at night, with tears streaming from my eyes, I remember, God knows what's best. Midnight hour, I was crying and all alone, waiting for an answer. All my hopes gone. I even called on my best friend, and she could not be found. Lord, you said you'll never leave me nor forsake me. Lord, where are you now? So I went to church the next Sunday morning Looking for my breakthrough I knew a change would come If I just hold on Cause God's word is true But then the preacher said something And it took me by surprise Sometimes God says no But just like Job you gotta trust him when God says no, but when the preacher said it, I didn't quite understand it. He said, don't forget, just trust your father, because he knows what's best. When I lay awake in the middle of the night, with tears streaming from my eyes, I remember. 
remember. Father knows, no matter what you're going through, because He knows. Father knows. And I start to feel a little better, because He started talking about my Jesus. And the garden of Gethsemane And how we pray to the Father Let this cup pass from me Then he did just like me, y'all Said he went to his best friends And his friends let him down He said, my God, my God Why have you forsaken me? Where are you now? Sometimes God is moving And we don't understand See Jesus paid the cost When we were lost And it was all a part of God's master plan So when you're waiting for that answer And God says no to you Just go ahead and shout hey, And have no doubt Trust your father Special guest speaker, Melvin Jackson, and his subject, Prove All Things. Good evening, and how's everyone doing today? I hope we had a great day. It's been a beautiful day. Uh, I know that sometimes our uh, financial uh, troubles will be in front of us, or our family troubles will be in front of us, or... Uh, you know, our health might be in front of us, but if we're on this side, we can always look above and look to the heavens and watch for the blessings to come down because anything that is out here can be fixed because all things are possible in the sight of God. I appreciate everything. I appreciate the the opportunity to uh, just share a piece of God's word. Because you can look at God's word 200 times a day and you cannot exhaust God's word. And you can always find something that you didn't see before. And that's what makes it a mystery. That's what makes it so good. That's what makes you want to keep eating and feeding on the word of God. And we all should want to know more and more and more about God's word. And I just want to appreciate this opportunity to be able to share a piece of God's word with you and what I have studied and what I've seen in the word of God. And I want to thank my friend, uh, Stevie. He is truly my friend, and um, I care a lot about that brother, and I know he cares about me. If he don't, I'm going to tell Jesus on him. But uh, amen. But uh, but I, I always... Uh, uh, have a special place in my heart for Stevie there because he's doing a, I think he's doing a great work for the Lord and allowing, uh, allowing us to come on and spread this gospel that needs to be spreaded so much in our community. Well, I tell you, it's it's been about a year since I've been on this program, but the scriptures is right. Life is like a vapor. I'm telling you, I looked at my calendar and I called. I said, man, it's almost time for me to go back on again. <laughs> I can remember 
I, I can remember, boy, when I was in, 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 in elementary school, it took Christmas three years to get there. Now it seems like it takes three months. I tell you, life is going very fast. I say, dog, for long, I'm going to be walking up into the Social Security office. Hey, man. <laughs> But uh, nonetheless, I tell you, this, this time is really pushing on, and people need to think about eternity is getting closer and closer, faster and faster. Well, we have a word from the Lord tonight. I don't want to hold you too long, but I want to invite your attention to First Thessalonians chapter 5, First Thessalonians chapter 5, and I just want to bring out a few thoughts uh, from a verse that's very familiar very familiar that we all say, especially in the church, we we love this scripture. But I've looked at it again and I say, you know what, it's something else here. Something that may be able to help us to 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 be better. And that's what it's about, us being better. And and, and if we're better, we can shine a light on the world and the world can see how good we are and want to be a part of that. Even though that's, we know that's our mission, that's what we want. We want the world to, to look at us and say, who are you? Who are you following? What did you do to get yourself to that point? That's what we want to hear. So we have an opportunity to tell them why, how, when, where. We can give them all the answers to their questions using the word of God. And when we are better, that's why we need to continue to look at the Word of God, continue to feed on the Word of God, that we will be better. Amen? I want to focus your attention to verse number 21. First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse number 21. And the Bible says, and I'll be reading from the New King James, but we know it even say, test all things or prove all things. And hold fast what is good. Now, we in the church, we, we, we love this scripture. We love this scripture where we say we got to prove all things because that's what we do. When we run up on people that got an idea that, that is more than one church, we see all these spreaded around in this country, in this world, in your city. We see all these different religions, but the first thing we'll go tell them, we can see over in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 27, the Bible says that, that we are the body of Christ and members in particular. We are different type of people because we are in the body of Christ. What do that mean, Paul? Paul was telling us that we are somewhere different. We are separated from this that we see it all around us, and people want to get want to say, "Well, no, anywhere you go, Amen, you can be saved." Then, but that's not what we read. So we want to prove that, Amen, <laughs> Amen. So it say that we are the body of Christ, but we look at Colossians chapter one eighteen. We're just trying to prove all things that the body that 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 that, that, that the scriptures say that what that the body is the church. So when Paul was saying that the body of Christ, he was actually saying the church of Christ. Amen. So we try to prove that because we want people to understand that it's only one name that has been given. Amen. And that one name that has been given has been given by God to Christ according to Acts chapter 4, uh, 10 through 12. That is no other name given among men. Amen. That we can be saved under. So if you are in the body of Christ, the church of Christ, then you are under a name that you can be saved under. That's stuff that we approve. And, and how do we do that? According to Acts chapter 2, we see that on the day of Pentecost, that about 3,000 souls started that, that day. They went right into the body, the church, amen. And then in 47, we can read that, hey, God, amen, what do you do? Add it to the church, the saved. So in order for us to be saved, we know we got to be in one place. And the one place has got to be in Christ. And then what is being in Christ is being in his body. We prove that. And how do we get in there again? We have to be baptized into it. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the scriptures say, for what? We all are many, but we have all been baptized into 
want to believe that all you have to do is just believe. Well, we we believe that too. You could just we if you don't believe, then you won't take the necessary steps to repent. If you don't repent, you won't confess. And if you don't confess, there's no need for you to be baptized. But if you do all of those things, you need to be baptized. You can't do it with just one step. We always have to go out and prove that. We're trying to prove all things. Amen? So in order for you to be saved, you have to be added to the body through baptism. And the body is the church the church of who that belongs to Christ. That's the only way you can be saved. Amen. So that's the stuff we have to prove when we say prove all things. Amen. But watch this, though. We got other things outside of that that we have to prove. Well, people feel like, well, well, David did it. Well, he pulled music into the church. Oh, well, no. Well, no, he didn't. We had to go over there. And, uh, uh, and if y'all don't mind, just turn right over to Ephesians chapter 5. The scripture say in verse number 15, the Bible say, look, see then that we walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Watch this. Redeeming the time because of the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, be under, uh, 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 but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine in which uh, 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 but be filled with the spirit But watch this Speaking to one another God said okay David wrote some pretty songs I like those songs But he didn't bring the music with him He said singing Watch this now Speaking to your to one another in songs Hymns and spiritual songs Now watch this Singing making the melody In your heart Amen because if, if that was the case, he would have said, well, well, if you sing those songs, because David made them, just bring the music with you. But he didn't say that. He said, you need to sing the songs, but you need to leave the music where it is. Amen? Can we see that? So that's stuff that we've been proving. We, uh, we, we prove all things. Amen? That's what our, what our models is in the Church of Christ. We want to make sure that people know what we say. And a lot of people know that the Church of Christ, oh, y'all the people over there don't have music, right? Y'all don't, y'all don't believe in music. No, I didn't say we didn't believe in music because you hear music on the radio every day. Amen? But we don't use musical instruments. Amen? Amen? Because God didn't ask for them. But now if God would have asked for a trumpet, Trust me, it would have been a whole church full of trumpets. <laughs> if God would have asked for a bongo, you would have seen bongos in every seat. Amen. But God didn't ask for that. So that's why all you see is song books. Because the scripture said the songs, hymns, and spiritual songs. Amen. So that's stuff that we prove. Prove all things. Another thing that we have to prove, and I'm trying to ease through this because I want y'all to look at the, the fact that we use this scripture in this way, that we prove all things, amen, and the things that we prove is normally is what's against the word of God, and that thing, those things I've been telling us so far are against the word of God, people are getting it wrong, they're not looking at it in context, they're not looking at it, you know, they, they, they want to be able to go where they want to go, they want to be able to sing like they want to sing and play musical instruments, I talked to a brother one time, and he told me, he said, man, I never played an instrument in all my life. And I just sat down at the piano and just started playing. I know that was the spirit. I said, well, anybody can play, they take lessons. <laughs> Amen. I'll leave that word here. Amen. Well, anyway, <laughs> but if the scriptures allowed these things, then we would have it. If the scripture didn't tell us we needed to be baptized, then we wouldn't be baptized. If the scripture didn't tell us we needed to take communion every first day of the week, then we wouldn't take communion every first day of the week. But when the scriptures say it, that's what we have to do. Watch this. The scriptures also talked about women preachers. Now, if women think they're getting the short end of the stick, you're not. You got plenty to do. Amen. You have plenty to do in the church. You don't have to be a pulpit preacher in order to prove your worthiness to God. But we, but there are women that's out there that feel like, well, uh, and some men, they're backing right up. Well, uh, what, what, what use is the woman? What use is the woman? Are you serious? Watch what the scriptures say, though. The reason why we don't have women preachers in the church, looking at 1 Timothy chapter 2, 
Watch what the Bible say, verse number 11. Let a woman learn in silence with all submission. And I do not permit a woman to teach or to have authority over the man, but to be in silence. For Adam was formed first, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived. Watch this now. But the woman being deceived and fell into the transgression. But watch this though. But nevertheless, see, nevertheless, she will be saved and childbearing if they continue in faith, love, holiness, and self-control. If that's not enough, <laughs> if that's not enough for you to be able to do, then I don't know what else you need. Childbearing. I never buried a child before. I heard it was painful. You know, I can't really vouch for that. Amen. But uh, probably scare a lot of people if I did. But uh, anyway, uh, 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 that that childbearing and uh, you got to continue in faith, and that's hard enough itself. Continuing in faith, you got to continue in love, amen, in holiness, and with self control. That's a whole lot to do. That's a whole lot to do. But we need to understand the deception didn't come to Adam. Eve was the one that was deceived. The devil was able to fool her. So there was a weakness there. Y'all don't need, women don't need that type of position. They don't need to be standing out there in the front like that. But we do love our women. And we, I tell you what, at the Church of Christ, you don't have to worry about the women. They got plenty to do, amen. <laughs> but they don't, and they, but they understand that they don't have to be pulpit preachers. But that's stuff that we prove, amen. I just wanted to pull out a few things and some of the main topics that we normally, you know, kind of uh, uh, debate with uh, uh, the, the the world with when it comes down to the difference in where the way we see the scripture and the way the scripture is written and the way that the world see the scripture. So that, when we look at that scripture, prove all things, first thing we do. But what I wanted to, to, to go into tonight is when we look back at that scripture in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, test all things and hold fast to that which is good. I want to ask a question. Do you have to prove that you're a Christian? <laughs> Do you have to prove that you are a Christian? See, we're not talking about having to walk out and, 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 and tell everybody I'm a Christian. Yo, yeah, yeah, how you doing? My name is Melvin Jackson. I'm a Christian. Amen. You know, oh, no, yeah, yeah, my name is Melvin Jackson. This is my wife. Uh, we're Christians. Amen. See, we can walk out there and talk all we want to, but do you have to prove that you're a Christian? See, We'll walk around and we'll talk, 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 and and oh yeah, y'all 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 don't need to have women preachers. Y'all don't have, need to have a music in your worship. Y'all don't need to have uh, uh, uh y'all need to baptize and and y'all need to be changing the name of that building or whatever. But but when people look at you, do they see more than just talk? Do we have to prove that we're Christians? Watch this. Watch what the Bible says. Let's back up the chapter, verse number 11, because we're going to work on this. Because, see, I want y'all to understand something. Over in Acts chapter 11, when them people seen how these people was acting in Antioch, amen, they seen that, hey, we've seen this before. We've seen people, we've seen somebody act like this before. Amen. We've seen Jesus act like this before. We've seen Jesus not have partiality to people. We've seen Jesus healing people that wasn't a part of him, wasn't a part of his culture. Amen. We Sometimes in the world, we let culture just get all in the way. We let tribalism get all in the way. But Jesus didn't, didn't, didn't do that. Amen. If he seen you was in need, he would help you. Amen. No matter who you was or even how you talked to him. Amen. Even when the soldier came up and tried to nab him and seize him and Peter cut his ear off, Jesus reached down and put the man's ear right back on. And he was coming to get him. See, that, that's what I'm talking about. See, these people see something like that going on in Antioch. And they said, wait a minute. These people are Christ-like. These people <laughs> are Christians. Because they're acting just like somebody that we know. Amen. And we are going around and we are talk the talk of Jesus. And we will show people how good God is. And 
we'll show people how much Jesus died for us and that he didn't have to do it and he had grace for everyone and, and all of this stuff. But we won't walk like that. It seems difficult to walk that way. So do we have to prove that we're Christians? Hey Amen. Let's just look at a few scriptures and see what the Bible has to say about that. Watch this. Verse number 11, 1, Corinthians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Watch this. Therefore, comfort each other and edify one another just as you also are doing. Watch this here. Sometimes it is just hard for us to give each other credit. I'm just, I mean, it, you know, it, it is hard because somebody want to do some work in the church and want to try to help themselves get to heaven. We seem to have a problem with it sometimes. We'll look at them like, oh, they're just trying to take over everything. And then as soon as you get the job, you sit down. <laughs> well, brother, I thought you wanted that job. Well, uh, well, I do. But, uh, well, then why would you talking drunk and trash about somebody that was doing the work? Amen? See, we don't want to give people credit where it is due. If we start patting each other on the back a little bit, and I'm going to tell you like this. See, I've heard people say, oh, well, see, you trying to take all the glory from God. <laughs> I've heard the scriptures say that you should give credit where it's due. Amen? If you owe somebody something, give it to them. If you owe them an apology, apologize. Amen. If you owe them a little recognition, if they would do it, watch this. Jesus was like that. Jesus told them people, he said, look here. He said, them people are out there in the street praying, y'all praying all in the streets, y'all giving all this money, y'all doing all this and doing all that, trying to act like you're so holy. But guess what? You have received your reward because you wanted to please men. God didn't take that away from them. They got exactly what they went out there to do. They went out there to please men, and God didn't take it from them. Amen. <laughs> so if somebody doing good, we need to edify them. It ain't that. We need to give them some credit. We need to pat them on the back. Because when people see that, they can see, well, our selfishness is not in the way of doing God's will. Y'all with me? Watch the Bible. And we urge you, brother, to recognize those who labor among you and are over. <laughs> and are, oh, I just had to laugh about that because if you recognize the people that are laboring among you and are, uh, and are over you in the Lord and admonishing you, amen, watch this. The scriptures say, what? Give them a, give them a little credit. Love your brother. Because, see, it, it, I know that, you know, we stand up and we'll preach on a Sunday morning and, you know, we'll stand back there and everybody say, oh, brother, we, we enjoyed that. You know, that was a good lesson. What, what, you know, shake our hand and everything. Not that we're letting it swell our heads up, I hope so, brethren. Amen. <laughs> but when we, when we teach a lesson that, that touched somebody's heart and it uplifted someone and it gave someone some encouragement, Amen. And it helped someone through a situation that they was dealing with. Then why not just say, okay, what well, you did a great job, brother. That brought me somewhere else. Amen. That brought me somewhere else. See, you're taking yourself out of it. You hear what I'm telling you? We're taking self out of it because it's so easy to get caught up in our flesh to where we will, we oh, well, well, I mean, I could have did a lesson better than that. <laughs> I could have taught a lesson. I could have touched more people than he just touched. Hey, Amen. What kind of spirit is that? Watch what the Bible have to say. It say, and to esteem them very highly. Watch this. How? In love for their work's sake. Hey, Amen. For their work's sake. Hey, Amen. See, you're going to do it in love because you love to see the church grow. See, I love it when somebody go to the water. Amen. I love to see, when to look back in the audience, and we got a packed house. I love to see my brothers and sisters invite people to church, and I invite somebody, and they show up on Sunday morning. I love to see that. 
because I, the, 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 for the work's sake, the church is growing. For more and more people to hear the word of God, amen, you want to encourage it. If you own a business and you say you own a business that's, that's, that's got sales, that deal with sales, man, every morning them car dealers have a sales meeting so they can pump them up, get them ready, give them strategies. You got to always, because why? You, you, you want to see the business grow. You want to see more money in the business. But if you sit there and every time somebody make a sale, oh, well, that's all right, brother. But, you know, I could have sold more than that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you did all right today, brother. But, uh, you know, Brother Williams, he, 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 he sold more than you did today. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah, you did all right. You, know? you, you putting your foot on people's neck like that, the church will never grow. Time we'll get in our own way. We'll talk about that in just a second. Watch this. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn those who are unruly. Amen. Warn them. If you're sitting around causing a bunch of mess, and I want to back up. I want to say something. I want to say something right quick. I tell you at the beginning that Stevie is truly my friend. Uh, you know, we're more than just brothers in Christ. We're friends. Amen. But I think, and it's a P for me, if you ever hear me speak on this program again or anywhere else, it's something I say all the time because it just, it just eats me up that we got better friends in the world than we do in the church. And that's a shame. Now, I understand we came from the world. We had good friends out there. And I had some really close friends, good friends that I, you know, shared everything with. But me and that friend don't have in common what me and Stevie have. See, we got a new bond. Amen. We're new now. See, we got something else that we're striving for. Not to say that I'm not trying to get him here, but as of right now, he's not. So he can't have in common. Talk about the old days, but something new <laughs> had to be talked about with my new friend. Y'all understand what I'm saying? And not like you're trying to shun someone, but see, you can't be running out in the street. And I know, hey, I'm going tell you something. Some people, hey, I've heard people do it in the church. They'll run out there in the streets and talk about the problems in the church to their friends. You'll never get them. You'll never get them. Damn, well, hey, y'all having all them problems, I might well not obey the gospel. I might well stay out here and do what I'm doing. That's a problem. We can't go out talking about the problems in the church to people in the world. You need to find someone in the church that you can link with, that you can that you can study with, that you can talk to, and we need to have friends in the church. Amen. Because I'm telling you right now, the only way that we're going to grow and be able to get out of ourselves is that we understand where each other are coming from. I might be, I'm still dealing with issues that, that, that you know, that, 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 that I brought in from the world. That might be something you and I can, can get together on and fight the devil with together. Too long on that, but, but I, well, yeah, I do. Because <laughs> that's one of my, I could close the lesson on that one. Yeah. Because I'm telling you, we just need to understand that where we are now is not what we used to be. The, the stuff I had in common with him then is not the same stuff I have in common with him now. Amen. Amen. Watch this. You, you, what you have to do, verse number 14, he said, now warn those that are unruly. Amen. You got people running around in the church just trying to tear down. You warn them because you're not going to get in between this. That's why Jesus had a perfect plan set up for people that run their mouth like that and try to be busybodies. See, Jesus had a perfect plan. Matthew's 18. Matthew's 18 will take care of all of that, every bit of it. You got a problem? You got a problem with Brother Jackson? Talk to Brother Jackson. We can sit down and talk about it. If it's a problem we can't resolve, then we get two more. Amen. Yeah, two or three more. If we can't resolve it then, we take it to the church. Because we got to trust our brothers and sisters. We got to trust the, the judgment of our brothers and sisters to listen to both sides of the story and figure out what's right and what's wrong. And if we figure out that, hey, that I'm wrong, I'm really wrong in this, then I need to repent. And if I don't, say goodbye. Amen. What I mean by that, you need to be withdrawn from. 
because you're not helping. You you're hurting because you got yourself in the way. One that are, that are unruly, but watch this: comfort the faint-hearted, uphold the weak. Watch this, because see that's where the unruly folk like to go. See, they don't bother with somebody strong. See, Satan, Satan knew that. See, that, that's the problem we had in the garden. Because Satan knew he couldn't bother with Adam. Amen. Oh, Adam wasn't going to have that. But he could go over there and ease over there and mess with ease. Amen. See, the, 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 the unruly, they don't bother with the strong in the church. The unruly like to mess with the, little, the, 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 the ones that are a little weak. The ones just come up out of the water, maybe bathe, have a little ailment with them. That's the ones they like to take down. But see, when we look like that, we're not proving who we really are or who we're supposed to be. Prove all things. Amen. Watch this. And be patient. Be patient with all. Amen. Be patient with all. See, when you're patient with people, you understand what, what they're about. You understand what they're going through. Watch this. Let's move on down just a little more. Watch this. See, that one, that no one renders evil for evil to anyone, but always, what's, what's that? Pursue what is good, both for yourself and for all. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks, for this is the what? The will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. See, when we quench the spirit, that's when our self walks into play. Amen? Watch this. Do not despise prophecy. Prove all things and hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every type of evil. <laughs> Amen. But watch this. Now made a now made a God of peace himself sanctify you. See, he separated you. He separated us. Amen. For a reason. Set you complete. Amen. Watch this. And may your whole spirit, body, and soul be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus. That's what it's all about, y'all. We're trying to get to heaven. And by us trying to get to heaven together, we got to help each other get to heaven. Amen. And helping each other get to heaven, we got to have love for one another. See, if, I, if, I'm on, if I say, well, do what you want to do, I'm going to go to heaven. I'm going to leave you here. <laughs> that's taking that that's that's putting that's just taking you all the way out, you know, and then putting me all the way in, and that's when my flesh started to show. And that's not proving who I really should be. That's not taking care of one another. That's not uplifting one another. That's not having each other's back. This is where we are now. Amen. And this is what we should be doing. When we prove all things, we need to prove that we are Christians. Amen. And proving we are Christians is having love for one another. And when we do that, we will draw all men under Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I appreciate it. I had to cut it down a little bit tonight, but there's some more there. Please study that and look at it, and you will hope that you can get more out of it. I hope that the Word of God feeds you and that you grow on it and that we can be loving one another more and more every day. And that to get close to one another, get used to one another, just ooze all over each other, and let's go to heaven together. Amen. God bless you, and God bless everyone that is under God's roof. These are the announcements for the events and activities in the Churches of Christ. If you would like to have your events or activities announced on this broadcast, please give me a call to Carolina Studio at 910-491-6405 or send me an email to srbutler1009 at yahoo.com. On August the 4th through the 9th, 2019, the Northside Church of Christ will be the official host of the 2019 Florida State Lectureship of the Churches of Christ in conjunction with the Jacksonville Congregations. The Newburgh Church of Christ, located in Louisville, Kentucky, is currently seeking a full-time minister. So please submit all inquiries to the NewburghCOC at gmail.com. Candidates will be forwarded a job description and application packet. Completed applications should be submitted along with the candidate's resume, references, and doctrinal philosophy 
and sample audio video recording of a sermon. On October the 31st, 2018 through November the 2nd, 2018, there'll be a gospel meeting at the Church of Christ at Cedar Valley. And that address is 4013 North Dallas Avenue, Lancaster, Texas, 75134. For more information, please give them a call at 469-567-1822. And that website is coccv.org. And the special guest speaker will be Alvin Daniels from Miami, Florida. On November the 30th through December the 1st, 2018, the 34th Annual Ladies Conference will be at the Southside Church of Christ. And that address is 800 Ellsmer Avenue, Durham, North Carolina, 27707. And the theme of their conference will be the first things first, Matthew 633, Mission Possible. The keynote speaker will be Mary Carter of the Gold Hill Church of Christ. And for more details, visit the website at www.sside.org. On November the 17th through the 22nd, 2018, the 2018 Southwestern Christian College will be hosting their lectureship in Turrell, Texas. On November the 2nd through the 4th, 2018, the United Voice Worship Conference will be held in Houston, Texas. And for more information, see www.unitedvoicesworship.org forward slash register. On November the 3rd and the 4th, 2018, the 26th Annual Homecoming Celebration and Song Fest will be held at the New Horizon Church of Christ. And that address is 6130 South U.S. Highway 441, Lake City, Florida 32025. And that guest speaker will be Terrence Beach, and the theme of their meeting will be Have You Ever Thought About? And their service schedule will be no- Saturday, November the 3rd. The second annual song fest will be from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and their Sunday service will be on November the 4th at 9.30 a.m. They'll have a sermon. Then at 10.30 a.m. there'll be another sermon. Lunch will be served at 12 noon. And there will be a worship service at 1.30 p.m. For more information, call 352-278-2720. And their website will be www.NewHorizonChurchOfChrist.com. On March the 21st through the 24th, 2019, the Millennial Reach Collaborative presents God's Plan Millennial Reach Conference. And that address will be 1201 Northwest Lejeune Road, Miami, Florida, 33126. It will be at the Marriott Miami Airport in Miami, Florida. For more information or registration, please visit the website at www.reach.com. And telephone number 228-331-3324. And just a program reminder, Stevie B's Media Production presents We're Airing Live Shows here on Blog Talk Radio. The first Monday of every month, we'll have a special edition show for the Gospel Light Radio Show. And on that broadcast, one of my co-hosts from the Gospel Light will be presenting a lesson from the Word of God on a special topic. And also on Tuesday each week from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 5 to 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, I'll be hosting a live show, What a Word from the Lord, radio show. And each week we have guest speakers from the Churches of Christ who will be presenting lessons from the Word of God. Also, we have a new segment called The Community Corner. That segment's for small business owners and entrepreneurs who have products and services for our communities. And also my co-host, Edward Bishop, he'll be presenting a lesson from the Word of God. He's out of Niagara Falls, New York. And then Thursday, each week from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 5 to 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, I'll be hosting a live show, the Gospel Light Radio Show. And on that show, I have eight co-hosts who will be presenting lessons from the Word of God. And each week, two of those co-hosts will be on the air with me. And I'm also taking questions from my shouted out platform on social media, Facebook, and posing two questions to my co-hosts on that broadcast. We also want to encourage our listeners to join that group on social media, shout it out, and get involved in those biblical discussions. 
And then on Friday night each week from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 5 to 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, I'm hosting a live show, Stevie B's Acapella Gospel Music Blast radio show. And each week, uh, each first week of each month, we're interviewing artists in the Story Glory segment. And we're also debuting new music, featuring old music. And the second week, my daughter, Tati B, will be my co-host. She's doing my whole playlist. And the third week, we're doing the Top 20 Countdown show. The fourth week, we're doing the Talent Search show. I give my listeners 60 seconds to stand on the world stage and sing your song. First and second place prizes will be awarded by my special guest, Judges. And once a quarter, we're doing the Marathon show. That's a three-hour show for whatever group of artists that we're featuring on this broadcast. And this uh, October the 26th will be my next Marathon show this Friday night. We'll be featuring the Southside Singers and the Malone Brothers on that show. And if you if you are an artist and you have any music that you would like for me to play on this broadcast, just send me your MP3 formatted tracks via Dropbox. And my email is srbutler1009 at yahoo.com. You can now listen to all my shows, on-demand episodes, through my affiliate internet stations, through Spotify, through iHeartRadio, through iTunes, through ACARadio.net, through iWave Radio, through MCCBroadcasting.com, IBCBroadcasting.com, YouTube, the Church TV Network, through my website, Spreaker.com. That's S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R.com. Just type my name in the search bar, Stevie R. Butler, and also the World of Acapello site. I'd also like to thank my sponsors for sponsoring this program, Sharon Norwood. She lives in Chicago, Illinois. Her business is Organo, and their slogan is a health product for healthier living. And also Yvonne Blazing Cracker Gooch. She lives in Nashville, Tennessee. Certainly appreciate my sponsors. And also the three E's of Stevie B's Media Production. It is the objective of this broadcast. We want to educate, we want to edify, and encourage you in the study of God's word. And that will conclude our programming announcements. Beautiful
You're listening to What a Word from the Lord with your host, Stevie R. Butler. I was on the line uh, with one of Carlos's friends. Let, let me bring her on the line. I know she didn't plan on doing this. Hey, sister, I'm, you on the air with me. Thank you for tuning into the broadcast. I don't want to put you on the spot, but I just want to thank you for tuning into the broadcast. Thank you so much. I was definitely um, honored to tune in and definitely got some good meat and potatoes for the soul. <laughs> Amen. Melvin Jackson, that brother preached. He was preaching. I, yes, I certainly sir. appreciate that, brother. He, You can tell he has a fire that shut up in his bones for the oh, Lord. Let Jeremiah, me, me come look. on. I'm going to do something that I normally don't do on this <laughs> show, but I'm going to do it tonight. I'm being moved tonight. Melvin? <laughs> yeah. Are you there? How you doing, my brother? I hey, want to thank yeah, you I'm for good. preaching that lesson tonight, brother. Man, I appreciate it. <laughs> I appreciate the opportunity. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't normally do this, but we, we got some folk on the air here tonight that were, who are first-time listeners to this show, and we just want to thank them for tuning in and just let them know that we, Lord say so, we'll be here on Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. Friday, so amen. Keep you walking in the light. Stay out of them shadows. We want to keep you walking. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to yeah, thank I you all. I appreciate it. Melvin, you did a great job, brother. You know I appreciate you, man. And I love you. Yes, sir. Love you, too, all brother. Right. Thank you much. All right. Thank you, everybody. Else. Now, I, I cut you off. Uh, say that again, Melvin. I say, oh yeah, no. I say, I appreciate it too, man. <laughs> All right. I, I'll get, All right, I'll, get I'll get, I'll get, I'll get a little happy, but I had to go ahead and get off, man. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you was getting happy, but but you was you was preaching it, bro. Sometimes, sometimes we we need to say these things, you know. It, it needs to be said. The gospel yeah, has yeah, to be We can't be biting our tongue when it comes to the truth. Sometimes words. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. I appreciate it, bro. Yeah, man. Well, God All bless right. you, man. And you All right, thank you, you, brother. God doing. bless you. Appreciate you, man. Yes, uh-huh. All right, so I'm gonna I'm not gonna keep you, but enjoy the rest of the show, okay? And thank you. Good night. All right. Bye-bye. All right. Now, coming up next, we got the community corner. Now, I had switched over. I thought I was talking to Carlos. Hey, brother, how you doing? Hey, Doc. How's it going, man? Hey, everything is good, man. I have no complaints. Looking forward Amen. to having you on the broadcast tonight. Sir? I said, looking forward to hearing you on the broadcast tonight. I'm I'm humbled for the opportunity. I appreciate you having me on. Yes, sir. Now, now we are in the community corner right now, ladies and gentlemen, and my special guest in the community corner is Carlos D. Page. He is the evangelist. In, that's the New Heights Church of Christ, right? Correct, correct. New Heights Church of Christ, Biloxi, Mississippi. Yeah, yeah. So now I originally had Carlos scheduled for the show in the community corner, and he's going to give us his presentation about his conference that he is uh, putting on, and also he's going to also bring us a lesson in the third segment of the broadcast. So go ahead, brother, and you do your presentation for the community corner, and then we'll bring you on again so you can present a lesson from God's Word. Thank you for joining us on the show. All right, thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Stevie. Um, we want to talk for a minute just about uh, the Millennials Reach Conference. I want to invite everybody uh, to South Florida, to Miami, March 21st through the 24th, 2019, uh, for the third annual Millennials Reach Conference. The first two conferences were held in the city of New Orleans, the great city of New Orleans, uh, and we just experienced uh, a phenomenal time in the Lord. Uh, and just to give you a little, a little backdrop about the Millennials Reach Conference, we, it's a conference uh, for the church, for the body of Christ. It's not just for millennials or young adults. Oftentimes we hear that, that, that word, uh, millennials, and if we're out of that millennial age range, we, we tend to, to tune it out. Uh, but the Millennials Reach Conference is not a conference just for young adults. It was a conference by young adults uh, for the body of Christ. And what, what the aim and the focus and the vision uh, for Millennials Reach is to bridge the generational gap in the church. Uh, to bring all generations of God's people together. Oftentimes, uh, we experience uh, turmoil. We experience um, dis- disagreements in the church. Uh, the young adults feel like they don't have a voice in the church any longer, uh, and a lot of them are just leaving instead of staying put uh, to, to, to work things out. And a lot of the 
older Christians or mature Christians are are starting to become frustrated with the young adults. Uh, and so we have this this tug of war going on back and forth amongst the body of Christ. And so millennials reach um, is a is is a catalyst that has been developed, uh, that has been prayed over, that has been uh, installed into uh, what it is that we are trying to accomplish, so that we have a, a bridge builder uh, in the body of Christ. And you you can't build a bridge from one side. You know, you know that bridges are built from both sides. And so when, when there's a gap, uh, there has to be some type of connection. And, and Millennials Reach is that conference. It's an organic conference. Uh, it's a conference that uh, you haven't seen before. Uh, it's very, it's very uh, relevant to today's times. We, we discuss a, a variety of topics. Uh, often topics, oftentimes the topics are sort of taboo in the church, uh, things that you often wouldn't talk about in the church. Um, I, I believe that. Uh, as as a, as a child of God, if we can't get our information from the church, then we're going to get it from the wrong source. And so, uh, Millennials Reach is that platform for for uh, the young adult Christian that's seeking to find their purpose, uh, to, to to understand uh, their call on their life, uh, and it's also for the maturing Christian to learn uh, how or, or to develop some 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 uh, some tactics and some principles and some ways, some avenues in which they can connect with the generations uh, behind them uh, and also grow stronger in their faith and in their, their, their declaration of, of the things that God has placed in them uh, in this season of their life. Uh, and so I, I want to also talk about some of the misconceptions about Millennials Reach. Millennials Reach is not a youth conference. It's not a, a conference for, for teenagers. It's not a conference for um, the adolescent, it's, it's not, this is not their venue. Uh, this is not a youth event. This is a young adult event. It's a, an event for all adult age groups. Uh, so for uh, our traditional emphasis, we're, we're shooting uh, to really target our 20 to 40-year-old uh, age group, and then those that are over 40, we have a mentoring academy uh, that we offer you as well. So there's some, something for everybody uh, at Millennials Reach. Again, the Millennials Reach Conference 2019 uh, is going to uh, be located in Miami, Florida, uh, March 21st through the 24th, 2019. Uh, we're privileged to have the Hope Church of Christ, uh, where uh, Alvin L. Daniels is the minister uh, in, in uh, Hollywood, Florida. They are the host congregation for the 2019 Millennials Reach Conference. If you want for more information or to go ahead and register, uh, for this year's conference, please visit our website at www.reachmrc.com, www.reachmrc.com, reachmrc.com. Uh, for more information if, or, or to call us for questions, you can call us at 228-331-3324. Now, what the weekend consists of is on typically on Thursday night we have a meet and greet uh, event where we welcome everybody to the city, we welcome everybody to reach, uh, we, and everybody gets kind of acquainted with one another. Uh, and then on Friday, we, we will have our annual community service event where we go out into the community and we serve the we serve the Miami area, we serve the citizens around Miami. Uh, and then that week, that night, we're going to have a a night of revival, um, a one night of revival song and praise and an and a, and a awesome word from the Lord, uh, and then you're free to do um, some, of, some other things on your own. Uh, Saturday, we have our breakout sessions and our panel discussions and our small group studies, uh, as well as our annual Millennials Bow Ties and Pearls annual gala uh, on Saturday night. And then on Sunday, we will be worshiping uh, with the Hope Church uh, in Hollywood, Florida. We welcome each and every one of you to come out this year to the 2019 Millennials Reach Conference hosted by the Hope Church of Christ, Hollywood, Florida. Uh, the venue is uh, the Miami Airport Hotel in Miami, Florida. Uh, for more information, once again, visit our website at www.reachmrc.com. And we're just so excited to have this year. This year's theme is God's Plan. Uh, and we're going to discover some things that, that we have never uh, looked at when it comes to our Christian walk, our spiritual existence, and our, our growth uh, as we move on to, to bigger uh, and better things in the Lord. Uh, there's no way that we can stay in the church and not grow. 
uh, and not do better uh, than we've done in time past. Uh, and another 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 uh, emphasis that we want to to try to uh, pay attention to is that we want this conference to our vision is to for this conference to be a feeder conference uh, to bring the generation behind us uh, forward as well. And so as we as we continue to grow in the Lord and as uh, time continues to pass, that we want this conference to be that feeder that keeps. Christians encouraged no matter what age bracket they're in. Uh, typically in the church, we, we have a, a, a huge hole right now. When you become an adult, there's no longer uh, the youth conference that you can attend. The national lectureship uh, and, and venues such as that uh, are not often as attractive as, as, uh, as they should be uh, if you're not a preacher or an elder or a deacon or a leader in the church. And so what we're trying to do now is establish a platform to where all Christians can be motivated, all Christians can be fed, uh, and we have a threefold mission of reaching upward, inward, and outward. We reach up to God from which cometh our help and our strength. We reach inward and within ourselves to grow spiritually, uh, to become better, uh, to become more faithful, to become more uh, dedicated uh, to the gospel, and then we reach outward to a community that is hurting, uh, that needs uh, the Savior's hand, that needs the gospel of Jesus Christ. That needs to be saved, and we also reach out to those that have that was once in the church but have left to find their own way. And so we ask you to join us in prayer over this uh, spiritual event, over this spiritual led, this spirit led conference, uh, and we ask you uh, to go on the website and register for this year's event. Millennials Reach 2019, Miami, Florida, March 21st through the 24th, Thursday through Sunday. Uh, visit or visit us on the web www.reachmrc.com uh, for more information and all of your conference updates. Like us on Facebook, like us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter. Uh, Millennials Reach, Millennials Reach Conference, Millennials Reach Conference. Uh, like us on Facebook. Also join the Millennials Reach Collaborative page on Facebook as well, uh, which is a, a a a group that's dedicated to bridging. Uh, all young adults across the country, uh, whatever young adult event is going on in the country, post it on the collaborative page. Uh, let us know. Uh, we want to serve everywhere we can. Uh, that's. If anybody has any questions, please feel free to email us as well uh, at millennialsreach.coc at gmail.com, millennialsreach.coc at gmail.com uh, for questions, and we will we will get to you. Uh, we will answer your question at our uh, convenience, or earliest convenience, and we'll try to do it as expeditiously as possible. That's your now, community, your community now, segment. Page, yes. I do have a question, uh, Brother Page. Will this conference be uh, you streamed? To be stream. determined. To be determined. Okay. We we know that that segments of it will be um, will be streamed. Um, we 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 typically will stream the the worship services. Um, we we want we encourage everybody to come out at least for um, uh, the Saturday events for the breakout sessions and the panel discussions. Uh, these events, some of these events will be streamed. All of the conference may may or may not be streamed. Uh, we we're waiting on. Um, our contracts to go through with with uh, different um, stream streaming agents um, mm-hmm. to try to get that service provided. Uh, that is something that we do shoot for in the future, that we are shooting for in the future. All right, Brother Page, thank you for coming on the broadcast and joining us in the Community Corner. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a special treat. After we come back from the break, uh, Brother Page will be bringing us a lesson from the Word of God. Stay tuned for What a Word from the Lord. I'm your host, Stevie R. Butler. There may be someone here without a ray of cheer. Your nights are filled with tears. It may have been that way for so many years. You're wondering what the answer. What can ease the pain? Just get on your knees and pray. 
that may be going through some trials and tribulations in your life. Your nights are filled with crying eyes, and it may have been that way for a very long time. But sometimes you wonder what the answer is. Maybe you don't know whether to go left, to go right, to go forward or go backwards. But sometimes you've just got to get on your knees and fall down. Pray to him. You just got to stand still and let God have his way. And watch him work. Watch God work. Watch him make a way. Watch him make a way. And one of these days, God is going to answer your prayers, not on your time, but on his time. He is going to make a way for you. Let the church say amen and amen one more time. You'll see a brighter day. Are you going through in your life? And you just don't know how you're going to fight your That you can't even see the light See, I've been there Trust me, I know I'm wondering if I'll make it to tomorrow I don't want to have to go through it again So let me share what I did Oh, yeah What did you do? See, I got down on my knees and prayed Yes, I did so I moved and let him have his way. Yes, Lord. And then by faith I know I'll see a brighter day. Just watch God work. Watch him work. Watch him make work. From the Lord with your host, Stevie R. Butler. Now, my special guest speaker, Carlos D. Carlos D. Page, and his subject, What Are You Waiting For? Good evening, everybody. Once again, uh, I'm Carlos D. Page, the ministering evangelist of the New Heights Church of Christ, Biloxi, Mississippi. We are so, uh, so ecstatic, so elated that uh, we have the opportunity to share with you on tonight here on uh the Stevie uh B's radio show uh a word from the Lord uh and I, I'm just thankful for this opportunity thankful thankful for uh the speaker that came on before me uh we appreciate your deposits into into our lives on tonight um I'm not going to be long uh Stevie so uh, but I, I do appreciate the opportunity we we spoke uh, earlier in, in the week um about coming on to uh, do some things for the Millennials Reach Conference, and I didn't I didn't know that I was going to be coming on to share a word. And so this was 
Uh, this was uh, last minute, but uh, there is a word in my spirit on tonight that I want to share with you uh, to encourage you uh, to be better uh, than you've always than you've ever been. Uh, I believe that every day that we have life uh, is a day that we should be improving. Uh, if you haven't improved any today, then uh, today was a day that you you should have uh, that you need to evaluate rather uh, to try to to try to do some things different on tomorrow so that you can improve uh, every every day of your life. God just doesn't just, God just doesn't do anything for chance. God does things by design, uh, and He designed this day specifically uh, for you. Uh, tonight, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm not going to keep you long, uh, but I do have a word uh, for tonight. Uh, and we're going to entitle this, uh, What Are You Waiting For? What Are You Waiting For? Uh, what Are You Waiting For? Oftentimes in life we, we have we have agendas. We have things that we really want to get accomplished. Uh, we have goals. We have desires. We have plans. Um, and, and we sit down sometimes and we map out those things and, that we want to accomplish. Uh, we map them out. We say that I'm going to get this done this year. I'm going to do this this year, especially with uh, the year winding down. Uh, a lot of us are saying, well, I'm, I need to do this and I need to do that, uh, but I'll wait to the first of the year. I'll wait to the first of the year to start studying God's Word. I'll wait to the first of the year to start exercising and taking better uh, care of myself. I'll wait, I'll wait, I'll wait, or I'll do this tomorrow, I'll do, I'll do that tomorrow. But uh, I want to ask you, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Tonight I want to, I want to take you to the text, just one text, um, mainly uh, that I want to launch from. Uh, Ecclesiastes 11, Ecclesiastes 11, verse number 4, Ecclesiastes chapter number 11, verse number 4, uh, the ecclesiastical writer says, He who watches the wind will not sow, and he who looks at the clouds will not reap. Uh, he who watches the wind will not sow, and he who looks at the clouds will not reap. Uh, I just want to give you a few things to take with you. Uh, as you go throughout the rest of tonight and tomorrow and the rest of this week, uh, is that whenever God wants something to be accomplished, whenever God is is, is doing something great, uh, God always uses seed uh, to make something happen or to make something come into, uh, into fruition. We look all the way back to the beginning uh, of the Bible when we look at Genesis chapter 1 and verse number 29. Uh, the Bible says, and God said, behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree that is in the fruit of, of, of a tree yielding seed. God has always designed seeds to give after its kind. Uh, if there's something that you're trying to experience or trying to, 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 uh, to incorporate in your life, if there's something that you're trying to uh, uh, advance to, uh, you have to plant that seed. Uh, the Bible tells us about the sowing and reaping and, 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 and that whatever we sow, that's what we're going to reap. So I want to ask you the question, why, if there's something that you desire for your life, why are we waiting before we sow seed? There can be no growth without sowing of seed. There can be no fruit bearing, uh, no fruit yielding without the planting or the sowing of seed. Now, the Bible talks about in Luke 8, uh, Jesus tells us that a sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell uh, by the wayside. And then he talks about the, the, the sun was trodden, and the fowls of the air uh, came and devoured it. Uh, and so when I look at Ecclesiastes chapter number 11, verse number 4, uh, he, the, the, the Ecclesiastes record says, He who watches the wind would not sow. The first thing I want to uh, get you to write in the tablets of your mind is don't focus on distractions. Don't focus on distractions. So, when we look at this this particular passage of scripture, uh, he says, "He who watches the wind will not sow." And there's a principle here that I want you to understand: is when 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 there's something in your life that you need to accomplish, there's something that we're striving for. There's there's a mark that we're that we're pressing toward. The devil will distract you. The devil, the enemy, will come in. And he will try to provide all of these different things to uh, discourage you or to, 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 to focus your attention somewhere else. And so what I get from this particular passage in, in the first part, in, in, in the eighth clause of the passage, he says, he who watches the wind will not sow. And, and the principle here is that a farmer, uh, the farmer will go out to, to get ready to sow seed, uh, and he will wait for uh, the wind. He will, he will check for the wind and 
on a windy day, the the farmer will get discouraged because he's he's fearful and he's 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 afraid that if he plants the seed or he sows the seed now, uh, that the wind will come and the wind will blow the seed away and that the seed will ne- not be able to germinate. And I want I want to suggest to you, child of God, that the wind. Uh, in this particular text, acts as a distraction to the farmer or to the sower uh, because if the seed uh, is not planted because he's watching for the wind, uh, then oftentimes he will go in and he will never come back out to sow seed because something else will distract him, something else will take him further than he was supposed to go. Uh, And before we know it, time has passed and we still haven't planted the first seed. Uh, So the first point I want to bring to you is don't focus on distractions. Don't look for the wind. Watch the seed. Your faith is in the seed because you understand that the seed has the power to yield fruit, but only if you sow it. Uh, don't, 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 don't get distracted by the wind. Then when you look at the B clause of the text, he says, uh, well, prefer the, the text entirely says, he who watches the wind will not sow. But then the B clause of the text, he says that he who looks at the clouds will not reap. Uh, he who looks at the clouds will not reap. Point number two is don't wait for better conditions. Don't be don't be focused on distractions. Point number two is don't wait for better conditions. There is never going to be the right time. Y'all hear this. There is never going to be a right time to do what you need to do. There is never going to be a right time to save more money. There is never going to be a right time to come to the Lord. There's never going to be a right time to have children, to get married, to do all of these things, to to find a better job, to go back to school. There is never going to be a better time. And that's why the text says, he who looks at the clouds will not reap. Here we go back to the the parable of, of the sower. In Luke chapter number eight, he says that a sower went out to sow. A sower in the, in this particular pericope of Luke chapter eight, verse number five, The sower wasn't worried about the wind. He wasn't worried about the clouds. He wasn't even worried about the soil. He still went out to sow. See, we can't worry about the things that that, that, that we have no control over. But what we can do is be concerned about the things that we have the power over, that God has given us the strength over, and go out and sow your seed. And so in in Ecclesiastes chapter number 11, verse number 4, don't be don't be focused on the distractions of the wind uh because you would never you would never plant because there's never going to be uh a, a, just the best conditions but then when you look at the clouds he says those that look at the clouds will not reap meaning that on a stormy day on a rainy day when thunderstorms are in the in the sky if you wait for the perfect atmosphere, if you wait for the perfect weather, you will never reap a harvest. It may be raining today. It may be hot today. And I'm using this as as an illustration to get you to understand, child of God, that it may be hot in your life right now. You may be in a season where everything around you is on fire. You may be in a season where everything around you is frozen, you may be in a season of life where everything is 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 getting flooded, uh, but if you look at the clouds, you will never get your reaping. You will never get your harvest. And so I want to suggest to you that from this particular passage, don't be focused on distractions and don't wait for better conditions uh, because the devil uses procrastination as one of the biggest tools to get the child of God to never do what God has called him to do. Then finally, beloved, I want you to be mindful of your environment. Don't focus on distractions. Don't look, uh, don't look for better conditions. Don't wait for better conditions, but also be mindful of your environment. What do I mean by be mindful of your environment? God uses things. In order for things to grow, God always uses seed. That's why he, he often tells us to, uh, to plant seed or to sow seed. and or We're often hearing things about, about seed. I will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. I, uh, um, that that the, a, a, a former went out to sow seed. Uh, we read from Genesis chapter 1, uh, verse number 29, uh, talking about how he, he yielded every seed uh, in the beginning of time, in the, in the creation movement, in the garden. He, 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 he brought forth seed to bring forth growth. Um, God brings forth seed to bring forth growth. 
God brings forth seed to bring forth growth. Be mindful of your environment. Seeds come in many different shapes, sizes, and varieties. Y'all come close real quick. But every seed that is planted has different uh, has different requirements. Every seed has different requirements. Some you can't plant too deep because if you plant them too deep, they they will they will get buried and they won't come up. Uh, some requires a, a, a more rich soil. Uh, some seeds can 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 survive. In, in, a, in a less dense soil. Some seeds need more exposure to light. Some seeds need, need less exposure to light. And so you have to be able to know uh, the requirements for the seed that you're, that you're getting ready to sow. And what, do I, what am I saying? I'm saying that your seed comes with a sacrifice. Uh, the seed that you're sowing comes with a sacrifice. But the requirements of that seed that you're going to sow, if you're not willing to put forth the work to make to bring forth the fruit that the seed is going to yield, then you don't need to sow that seed. Uh, so watch for your environment. What do I mean by watch for your environment? You have to know who you're around. You have to know what what you're around, and you have to know the timing of what you're involved in. Seed takes time to grow, but if you don't plant it today. You're one day behind on receiving your harvest. You're one day, you have to wait another day longer before you, re- you bring in the fruit from the seed that you've, bear, that you, that you've planted. Um, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for to, uh, today when you can do what you need to do today? Today is not even over. Today's not over. And so I want to encourage you. Uh, the Bible says in Galatians chapters number six and verse number nine, he says, let us not be weary uh, in well-doing or in doing good for if we, uh, if we don't, if we don't give up, uh, we will reap, we will reap those things that we've planted. What are you waiting for? Plant your seed today. Whatever you've been putting off, whatever you've been saying that I'm going to do, I'm going to do, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. The Bible tells us, even Benjamin Franklin, watch this, even Benjamin Franklin said, don't put off uh, tomorrow what you can do today Benjamin Franklin must have been a Bible reading man Because the book of James tells us the same thing Don't uh, don't come and say What you're going to do on tomorrow Or, or today or, or next year But he says do it now And he says Because we don't know what our life is going to be like on tomorrow Because life is like a vapor That appeared for a little while Then vanishes away Child of God, beloved friend, neighbor Family I need to encourage you tonight don't put off what you can do today and say you're going to do it tomorrow. What are you waiting for? God has given you time. God has given you opportunity. God has given you spiritual gifts. God has given you the financial stability that you need to, in order to do what you need to do to go to the next step. You may not be where you want to be today, but if you use what you have today, and use it for the best, and use it at the best you can possibly use it, then you have more tomorrow. Uh, you can't expect to have more if you don't use what you have today. And so I want to encourage you from Ecclesiastes chapter number 11, verse number 4. He who watches the wind will not sow, and he who looks at the clouds will not reap. Don't focus on distractions. Don't wait for better conditions, and be mindful of your environment. There may be some people in your life that is causing you to wait. Because they they have you busy doing any and everything else but what God has destined for your life, that what has God has called you to be in your life. But, 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 friend, most importantly, God has called us all to be his children. He's called us all to follow after him. He's called us all uh, to be members of his son's body, to be a part of his kingdom. He's made a covenant with us. But if you don't keep your part of the of the contract, then the contract is null and void. Don't wait. Stop waiting. Stop procrastinating. Stop Stop saying, I'm going to, and start saying, I am. Stop saying that I will do and start saying, it's time now. Child of God, we love you. We hope, trust, and pray that God uh, has blessed you on tonight and that if this is blessing you, this bless, this word has blessed your life, share it with somebody. Uh, tell somebody about the Stevie uh, Butler radio show. Thank you once again. Uh, Dr. Butler, for how having me on the show uh, on tonight to talk about the Millennials Reach Conference. We hope to see each and every one of you in Miami, Florida, March 21st through the 24th. 
uh, for the Millennials Reach Conference 2019. Uh, go visit us once again on the website, uh, excuse me, not millennialsreach.com, uh, www.reachmrc.com, www.reachmrc.com. Don't wait. What are you waiting for? Don't look at the wind. Don't look at the clouds. Look to Jesus. Look to the source. Look to God, who is the author and the finisher. He is the alpha, the omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. What are you waiting for? I now commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all them that are sanctified. May the devil chase you every day of your life, and may he never catch you. God bless. God can. Oh, God I don't know what you're going through right now, but I'll admit it, y'all. The struggle is real, and sometimes I faith it gets a little weak. But over the years, y'all, I found out. God can. God is able. So we don't have to worry ourselves about it, y'all. So I just keep telling myself these two words. God can. God can. My God, he can. Oh, he can. Tried him and I know, no, no, no. Said I know he could do it for me right now. There's a time in every life. Trouble comes, then we stop and wonder why. Why? Especially when you're trying to do the right thing. <laughs> Can I get a witch? Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Why this tears and why this pain? God, my soul is weak. I need some things to change. So I'm calling on you, Lord, Lord. <laughs> then I hear the Holy Spirit speaking to my your eyes is all right, God always supplies your need. So I put my trust in thee, cause I know you can. Oh, God, but I know you can. He's got all power in his hand. Oh, you gotta trust and believe. You gotta have faith to receive. You gotta know you can, Lord. And even in your darkest hour, when you can't see your way through, see I know you thought it was over, but but I can see the sun peeping through the clouds, but I know. He can do anything. Grace, unmerited favor. Standing here by God's power. There's amazing power. Oh, Lord. In weakness, I found strength. I found the peace.
with us this evening in a study of God's Word. I want to thank my special guest speakers. I had two special guest speakers on the broadcast this evening. Melvin Jackson from High Point, North Carolina, and Carlos D. Page from Biloxi, Mississippi. Ladies and gentlemen, this was a great show. The Word has been preached, and that's all that really matters when it comes down to the final analysis of human affairs. God's Word is preached, and God is glorified. Ladies and gentlemen, I also want to thank uh, Brother Page. He was also in the Community Corner. Uh, he told us about the Millennium Conference, and he'll be back on the show at a later date before that conference is held, so he can give us some more information to refresh our minds as well, coming conference. Now, also, it is my prayer, ladies and gentlemen, that the lessons th- that you heard on the broadcast this evening have been beneficial to your spiritual lives and your relationship with the Lord has been strengthened because you are tuning into this broadcast and you have given yourself over to a study of God's word. So until we meet again, I pray God's continual blessings upon your lives and that he bless you real, real good. Good night, everybody.
gonna no, 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 I ain't gonna stop now. Anybody out there? So the storm have been tried no, and tribulation. Just wanna encourage you. Keep moving on. Keep moving on. I, I need somebody who's been through something. Help me now. I've had some ups and downs, some hard times in my life. I've had to wipe so many tears from my weeping eyes. No, the pain will last only for a night. That's why I'll hold on till the morning light. You see the suffering we're going through it don't compare. The dread is that way for us all the day. I gotta keep on climbing though sometimes we make it hard. But we ain't gonna stop till we reach the top. The The devil tries to make us think there is no way out. Maybe you lost the one that was close to you. Maybe you're sick and there's nothing you can do. Oh, yeah. Just keep your eyes to the sky. When times get hard, keep pressing toward the prize. Oh, you see, I'm trying. They won't last for long. They only make them so they gotta keep on. Oh, oh, oh. 